Becky, it reminds me of the famous quote by the Italian political philosopher Antonio Gramsci, who says, sometimes decades pass by and nothing happens, and sometimes in weeks, decades happen. And I, I think this is such a moment in the Middle East. What's happened in the past 24 hours is incredible, and you're absolutely correct. We've had not only the assassination of Hezbollah's chief of staff, it's essentially top military commander now, but also the confirmation of the assassination of Hamas's top military chief and the assassination of Hamas's political leader. That is extraordinary. And I think it's a moment for all of us, myself included, in the analytical class here, who for a very long time have been saying that nobody, none of the involved belligerents in this conflict wants a full-fledged full -fledged war. Not the United States, not Iran, not Hezbollah, not Israel. I think we have to reconsider in light of the events of the past 24 hours. And to be fair, I don't think it's only the narrow political interest of the Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, who we heard speak uh, just yesterday, who said, I've been pressured to end the war and I will not end the war, and then uh, pointed to all the victories and the successes that mm. he's had, all, all these assassinations. I think there's a broad consensus in Israel. Um, Bibi's never been as popular as he is today since October 7th. And there's a broad consensus in Israel that the balance of power on the northern border, border with Lebanon is unsustainable. And everybody I talk to who's been to Jerusalem uh, tells you that it's a matter of, of when and not if. This might be the moment, unfortunately, where we see something at a much, on a much grander scale than mon m many of us had imagined or hoped for. Hezbollah considered Iran's uh, military wing, as it were, in Lebanon, um, finance backed by Iran. Um, what happens next with regard Israel and Hezbollah is a, is a really important question. But behind this, of course, is you know, what's the instruction from Iran? And the New York Times reporting on Wednesday that Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei issued an order for uh, Iran one assumes proxies as well, included in that, to strike Israel directly after Hanea's death. Um, I just wonder, firstly, what that looks like and who, at this point, can take the pressure out of the situation. We know, and you and I have talked about this, um, the, the US, it seems, have sort of run out of leverage uh, with uh, the region when it comes to trying to de-escalate. What about the Saudis, for example? What about Riyadh and other uh, Gulf allies of the states and those who have some, you know, some friendship or at least some, you know, communication with uh, Israel, let's be quite frank. You know, it, is there anybody at this stage who needs to step forward and say, let's just, you know, think about where this goes? Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I would love to be a fly on the wall in these private conversations that are taking place between Washington and Jerusalem. I think despite the public discourse coming from the Biden administration that, you know, the old line that Israel has the right to defend itself mm. and that the United mm. States will stand by its ally, there must be a great deal of frustration, to say the least, given what's materialized in the past 48 hours. Washington, the Biden administration, does not need that kind of escalation in the Middle East in an election year when we're three months away and there's just so much happening in domestic, uh, uh, domestic U.S. politics. But I do think that this is a good example of the limitations that Washington has in terms of trying to prevent even its closest allies in the region to step back from war when, in fact, the calculus seems to be in Jerusalem that war and changing the balance of power is in its interest. And at the time, if Washington is unable, in fact, to exercise that kind of leverage, uh, I think that, frankly, its partners in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, others included, don't have that kind of leverage. They might want to sit this one out, play the role of intermediaries, perhaps passing messages, especially the Qataris, but the reality is that there's, there's not much that others can do if, in fact, Israel in particular, but others in the region. I mean, the Iranians still have the opportunity to step, step back from this. Hezbollah, too, a more limited response. But simply put, this is not the way things are going right now. Mm. Firas, um, your insight and, um, 
and, and analysis is really important. Um, I, I'm, I'm so pleased that you've been able to make yourself available to us uh, over the past, what, 24, 26 hours. Um, so